operate in truth, right? Operate in truth. You know, tell the truth. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Gator Truth, Florida Football Podcast. I'm Daniel, and on this episode, we're going to take a look at the Gators game against the Sanford Bulldogs kicking off at 7 p.m. this Saturday in the Swamp. Of course, Florida has played Sanford in the recent past. Uh, Back in November 2021, Florida had a thrilling game (laughs) against Sanford. And by that, I mean, Florida allowed a ton of points. Uh, And that was definitely not what we wanted to do. And 70 to 52 for sure. Um, And in that game, it really was interesting because that week, of course, Todd Grantham had been fired and a lot of his players kind of rebelled first, uh, first time DC, the interim DC Christian Robinson, probably giving his all at the same rate. The players were, which is to say not quite, of course, a lot of people like to point to that game as a downfall of, uh, Dan Mullen, but it was, for me, it's just another symptom of a sickness. Of course, the Gators end up pulling, uh, 70 points. Of course, Samford had 42 of their 52 points by halftime. And then the team really turned it on. Um, but with that said, that performance never should have happened, even if players are kind of rebelling against the firing of their coach. This Samford team, however, is not that Samford team from 2021. Uh, Samford last week played the West Georgia Wolves. Now, West Georgia, just to let you know, is a they are an FCS team, but they just started an FCS this year. They're an NCAA Division II prior to July 1st of 2024. So team just making a step up to to the next division ends up taking on Sanford and getting the win. So with that said, this is not a Sanford team that I think the Gears should worry about. Granted, you never know, but this is a team that I will say you make a coaching change if this game is close because this is a bad team coming into the swamp on Saturday night. And this team should be motivated after everything that's been said about them, their coach, and everything else since the end of last year. But especially after getting blown out at home by Miami, by Miami last season or last week, sorry, the first game of the season. Um So I'm doing it a little bit differently this week. I'm going to go through things I want to see or think we're going to see on offense and things I want to see and or think we're going to see on defense rather than keys to the game because I do think for this game it is going to be a blowout or should be a blowout. And so there are things to kind of take advantage. I will say at the top, I think one of my – Things I want to see for both, so it's not really listed in one or the other, is I want to see young guys come in, and I do want to see them get plenty of reps. You get four games a season uh, to be able to keep your red shirt, so it's a good time in games like these to have the guys come in, play you know, the third quarter, fourth quarter, and get some experience, uh, get some you know time of seeing the speed of college football. Granted, it's not necessarily the speed you'll see in the SEC, but it is that experience of playing in front of the crowd, playing for Florida, utilizing what you're learning in fall camp, spring camp, whatever, and hopefully building experience for the future. Or if unfortunately injuries happen and you need to get called on. And before we begin looking at the offense, let me go ahead and give a shout out to some of my friends. And one of those friends of course is my friends over at Alvarez lawn company. If you're in the central Florida area and you've got a lawn project or you're tired of mowing your grass or whatever it may be with your lawn, give my friends at Alvarez Lawn Company a call at or even a text for a free quote at 407-490-2617. You can also give them an email at alvarezlawncompany at gmail.com. Once again, for a free quote, you can call or text the number 407 
490-2617. Alvarez Lawn Company, building plans that work for you. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some things that I do think we're going to see on offense. Uh, just breaking with the depth chart being released is that DJ Lagway will be getting his first collegiate start. Unfortunately, Graham Mertz with the concussion protocol has not practiced this week, so we will see DJ Lagway getting his start. And to be honest, this if you he had to get a first start, um, first collegiate start this season, this is the game you want it. You want it against an overmatched opponent. You don't want what happened in 2021, uh, you know, brought up that year earlier where Anthony Richardson's first start is against one of the best defenses of all time in that 2021 Georgia team. And, of course, that didn't help anyone. But here you got a chance to gain confidence. You've got a chance to work through maybe some of the difficulties that you have had, you know, learning the playbook or just executing. And that's not to say that I know he's had difficulties. That's not to say anything like that, but this is a guy who is making his first start and we will see some true freshman mistakes. We will see, you know, things I can work on, but we're also going to see what made him the number one QB prospect of five-star coming out of high school and what made him the Gatorade national player of the year. I do think, that as part of the offensive game plan, Billy Napier is going to try and make it look as good as possible. What I've likened this to, to some people I've talked to is the 2021 Vanderbilt game. It's funny. We keep talking. I keep bringing up 2021 Dan Mullins last season, but that's because there are lots of parallels between that and what we're seeing this season at Florida, at least through one game with the coaching pressure, but also things like this. The offense was not very good uh, last week at all, not even 300 total yards of offense, I believe. And and when you talk about, you had 71 on one play, that is not good. Well, going back to that Vanderbilt game, before the Vanderbilt game, there was lots of critique about how Emory Jones could not throw the ball well. He was the SEC leader in interceptions, had a pretty bad game at Kentucky the week before or two weeks before. And I said to some people ahead of time, I didn't have the podcast yet. I said, Dan Mullen is going to have Emory Jones throw for a ton of yards because he wants to show, hey, look, I know what I'm doing by having this guy as my quarterback, even though, you know, it's Vanderbilt and Vanderbilt should never be the <laughs> never be the team that we judge against, no matter what anyone says, even if it's 2017 and you have WRUF screaming at callers because they don't like the offense and they use Vanderbilt as Here's where you're going to see good offense. But anyways, uh, we'll forget about the past, but I want to give you the box score of Emory Jones in that game. He had 273 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception. I do think that we try and see DJ Lagway uh, within the system that Billy Napier has throw for a lot of yards. Now, we've seen Billy Napier be a lot more aggressive against overmatched teams and then against equal teams not be as aggressive. Granted, last week we did have a few aggressive play calls that we did not execute. Graham Mertz did miss on multiple deep posts that should have been touchdowns. So I could see against an overmatched opponent with our speedy receivers that we do see a lot of that. What does that mean to me in the long run? Honestly, nothing. If Unless you do it going forward against AM and then Mississippi State, then UCF, then Tennessee, then Kentucky, so on and so forth. Um, but it will be at least a good day to have some fun for your fans in the swamp. And it'll be something to at least hopefully build confidence for DJ Lagway and for those receivers after what was really a disappointing start to the season. And I would say that the passing... We do. We will probably try and force more than 250 yards, and I do think that's uh, what we're going to see, whether it's just a few deep shots or what happens. But after all the criticism, I could see Billy Napier trying to 
say, oh, look, my system works. Look how many yards we put up against the Sanford team. But again, for me, it's Sanford. The only thing I can take away, like take meaningful away, is if it's bad. If it's good, I just say, okay, that's good overmatched opponent. Move on. But if it's bad, of course, you know, we've got a deeper conversation and that deeper conversation may come in the next few weeks, but hopefully not after this week. Again, I'm hoping for just a sit back, relax and have a fun night in the swamp. If you're a player or if you're a fan and for rushing, I'd say probably around 150 yards rushing is what I'm looking for. I don't think Montreal Johnson gets a hundred yards, not because I don't think he's capable, capable, but also Get him a few reps, but rest him again. I don't, although he had some good plays, he also had some so so plays last week. But with the knee that's still recovering, why risk po- possibly re injuring or doing anything? Give him a f- few reps and then let the young guys like let Trayon Webb feature a little bit more, getting more carries. Uh, you know, Jaden Baugh or Katie Daniels or Jacoby Jackson. Get them more, and in that 150 yards rushing, I also think we'll see some DJ Lagway scrambles. So I'm looking at hopefully, if you if you're counting that up, I'm looking for us to get over 400 yards of offense. Hopefully, more. One thing to note is last week there were, I believe, at least four SEC teams that went 69 points or greater. And this is a chance we could do that. But I will say we do face some of those teams. We face Ole Miss. We face Tennessee. And I believe, uh, I I can't picture the other one, but many 40-plus point wins, and that's something we do need to see. Um, I do expect us to score 40 points. I don't expect us to score 60, 69 like some of these teams did, 69, 70 plus, but I do think we'll score 40, 40 to 60, maybe less than 60. I could see us doing eight touchdowns, 56 and a field goal, 59 on the high end. I could see us scoring 42 on the low end last year. I think we won 49 to seven or McNeese, which is about the same type of matchup that we'll see here. But I do think we might put up more points just because of a lot of the critique and the bad taste in people's mouth coming out of last week. And you really want to start building some momentum and maybe turn the temperature down just a little bit if you're Billy Napier. So you take that offense, you just try and have the most explosive fun night you can. And if you can do that, then, hey, maybe for a week, It's not all talking on Twitter about who's our next coach as it's been this week. It's not all about Wednesday getting fired. It becomes, okay, let's see how he does against A&M. So big for this offense to go out, be explosive, and big for Billy Napier to go out and make this offense be explosive. A pedestrian output like we saw against USF two years ago or against Charlotte last year is not acceptable and cannot happen. I do expect we try and see, or they do try and just show off, but it's got to happen. You've got to get to at least the, in my opinion, the 50 point mark. But like I said, and part of it is just the nature of this offense. I think 40 to 59 is where we end up, but anything on top of that would be awesome. And before we get to the defense, I do want to talk about my friends at GatorChatter.com. Gator Chatter is a message board. They have plenty of fun games right now. We've got a pick them going on. We've got a survivor. Luckily, Minnesota missed their kick at the end of regulation. Keeps me alive in the survivor contest. But if you like talking to other Gators, Gator Chatter is the place for you. I know people are in Facebook Messenger groups, Discords. In many ways, Discord is just a new fancy term for a message board. And so check out my friends at Gator Chatter and be part of the conversation today. Gator Chatter, your Florida Gator sports bar. All right, so let's talk about the defense and things I want to see with this defense. Of course, we were sold such a bill of goods on the defense coming into the season and 
really that did not hold up. I mean, Miami scored on six of their first eight drives. We did see on the second drive, we saw Cameron James get pressure on Ward, for forcing a turnover and an interception by Shamar James. But outside of that, there weren't many highlights for the defense at all. This is a game where I think that that defense has something to prove. Now they are missing uh, senior safety, Asa Turner. They are missing cornerback Devin Moore, who went out early in that game against Miami with an injury. But as they're out again, we're talking about chances and opportunities. We're talking about guys playing, getting experience. Jakeem Jackson, who kind of had a rough game against um, against Miami, is going to get reps in that start at the corner opposite Jason Marshall. Jordan Castell, true sophomore, going to continue to get experience at that safety position, not the best week for him last week. DJ Douglas, a guy who I've talked about on the show before, as a player that I really think fans could get behind because he started his career as a walk-on, earned a scholarship at Tulane, and then turn that into a scholarship at Florida, you know, maybe takes this opportunity to grow and really become an SEC type safety that we're hoping that he does become, you know, and then this is a good opportunity game like this. If you get up ahead, I mean, sure. We've got Shamar James. We've got pop Howard as nice experienced guys who are getting better and getting experience at a linebacker position. But we've got two major linebacker recruits who I'm sure fans want to see more of. Miles Graham and Childs, we want to see them come in, and Aaron Childs, and get that experience. Because who knows if something happens and they're forced to play in a few big games. At least now they'll have some game experience. You know, hopefully we continue to see, you know, Cameron James, who we didn't see much of on the actual defense last year, Continue to see him grow. Um, definitely, again, one of the better guys I felt he was last last week, one of the better guys on defense. We could see LJ McCray, who was a top 10 recruit with DJ Lagway. You see LJ come in and hopefully get lots of experience and maybe earn more reps on, on the defense, be part of the rotation on the defense uh, and help this defensive line be better. I thought they would be a bigger strength than they were against Miami. And now it's time for them to put up or shut up. And maybe with guys like LJ McCray getting more opportunities against an overmatched opponent, they can work their way into a little bit of a rotation or at least, again, have that experience. Um, so who knows, but what am I looking for out of this defense? I am looking for 14 or less points. Sometimes, you know, you're up big and something happens and your backups give up, you know, a touchdown. It happens or they give up a field goal. I'm not going to ask for, you know, a shutout. It would be nice, but I understand sometimes you want to play the walk-ons who, have been here for three, four years, and this year maybe this may be the only game they get a chance to, you know, get repaid for all the work they put in throughout their time at Florida, and get a just a snap or two, and and get to say I played on Florida field, and maybe it's good, or maybe it's not, but things like that do happen in these games, and sometimes points are given up, and that's why fourteen or less is really what I'd like to see. But uh, one thing I do want to see is a pass rush. I mean, get me three, four, five sacks uh, against a team that lost to West Georgia, a team that just came up from Division Two. Should there's no reason why you should not be getting sacks unless they strictly go to a run game at Samford. Of course, Sam. Who knows? Um, but you got to get that pressure on the Bulldogs, if you're going to have a fun day. Because if you don't, you know, last week we saw without much pressure, quarterback time, he may they may find something. Hopefully they don't. And the last thing I want to see from the defense is I want to see multiple turnovers. If we get that pass rush, I guarantee you we're going to see an interception somewhere or a forced fumble on the quarterback or both. And then 
also with, with the running backs. Try and strip that ball. Try and get the ball out. We're pretty good about getting the ball and stripping the ball, forcing fumbles two years ago. Last year, not so much. But this year, I'm really hoping that we see lots of improvement. Did not see it in the last game. Hopefully this game, they can start to just see the stuff they do work and put it all together. But until we see that for sure, those are just hopes. And again, the things I want to see from this defense are 14 or less points. The, you know, a good pass rush, which includes multiple sacks. And I do want to see multiple turnovers because if you can't do that stuff against a team like Samford this week, then I'm not sure how you're going to do it next week against a team like AM that for most of the game gave Notre Dame a hard time. I don't know how you're going to do it against a Jeff Levy coach team in Mississippi State who put up a ton of points for their first year in the system after we talked in the preseason. They've been through three systems in three years, and this is a completely new group, and they look very good on offense. I don't know you're going to do it against K.J. Jefferson and UCF. Granted, Jefferson at times looked terrible for UCF, and I'm really not sure how you're going to do it, you know, against Tennessee at Tennessee if you can't do it this week. So start this week with doing great defense and causing havoc, keep the points low, get your pass rush going, force the turnovers. That's what I want to see from this defense. And really, again, this should just be a fun night in the swamp, and I do want to say something. I've seen people say, you know what, we're fed up with this. Let's not go to games. If you don't want to go to games, that's your choice. But I know that there are plenty of people that have you know, paid their tickets. Guess what? After they got your money, they don't care as much whether you show up or not. But also, going to games is not about supporting a coaching staff. You may or may not want to be at Florida anymore. Going to games is about supporting the players. So that's the one thing I would say is if you want to go support the team, this game against Sanford will be a good one to go support. Why? Because you are not. You shouldn't be frustrated with the game. It should be just a fun night to go. Watch a game with your family. Bring the family. Support the players that work hard for this team, even if you ne- don't necessarily support the coaching regime anymore. And that's really all I have to say on that. Again, I think I said on the last episode, I'll say now, I've planned to go to all 12 games this year. I'm not changing it, you know, unless something (laughs) happens that keeps me from that. And it's going to support these kids and the university that I love. And with that said, thank you all for listening. And as always, go Gators. (laughs) 